What's going on Forge Nation and off-road overland enthusiasts? Carter here, I'm at Elite Finish in San Diego with my boy Wes, founder of this awesome establishment. They do PPF, wraps, color correction, ceramic coating, probably something else that I missed. Window High end detail. styling, yeah. This place is like a Porsche dealership mixed with a Tesla, <laughs> like enthusiast and then off-road awesomeness. This place is a car lover's dream. But we brought in Apollo here as we've been taking it off road. This always happens to all of our vehicles. You start getting some swirl marks. Doesn't look like it's a factory finished paint job, which is what we want. So we had to bring it to you, especially after learning a little bit more about you guys and showcase what you can do. Now, the million dollar question is PPF, paint protective film or ceramic coat for an off road vehicle. Let's dive into some of the benefits, some of the disadvantages and advantages of the two. For starters, what is a ceramic coat? Yeah, so the that debate is a really good debate and both have a lot of different values for, uh, for vehicle owners. A ceramic coating is a liquid that once it's been applied to the paint, it hardens up, it actually forms a bond with the paint. Uh, some of them form even like a, a permanent or semi-permanent bond. Others are a little more temporary. Um, but what it is is essentially a sacrificial layer to the paint. So it allows for uh, some abuse to be done to the coating and then have the coating polished off and recoated, you know, down the road. Yeah. So it makes sense. And four or five years ago is when it first came out and it was game changing, right? It was so, yeah, I mean, actually ceramic coatings have been around for a little over 10 years in the U.S. market, but they started to gain traction about eight or nine years ago and then they became very popular there's kind of a contingent of us high-end detailers around the nation that all really helped to push this into the market a lot harder. I've been installing for nine years uh, ceramic coatings, and you know I got together with a lot of uh, a lot of local detailers and national detailers to really bring awareness to the benefits and also the downsides. Because for a while there, there was videos like "never wash your car again," "never wax your car again." There's these very misleading videos, so we helped to try to like you know, shape this industry to really show that benefit. Yeah. And I think we're going to see it right away, especially looking at some of the examples around the shop and seeing the work, seeing some of the work that you've done, you could tell right away when something's been ceramic coated, especially two, three, four years down the line. And you look at the coat, paint coat and you're like, what year car is that? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's a 2016. You yeah. could have never known unless you knew that was, yeah. you know, actually treated. So that is awesome. Now PPF, we put PPF on our TRX for Freedom Street Garage, one of our other brands love the look of it, but also the functionality. Now, PPF is a little bit more expensive, sure. but what are some of the advantages of PPF, especially for like the off-road community? Yeah, so I'll, I'll first speak to one of the um, sort of uh, inabilities of a ceramic coating is where the paint protection film steps in. So a ceramic coating cannot stop rock chips. It cannot stop, if you're off-roading through really heavy brush, your vehicle's filthy, and a really stiff you know, branch scrapes down the side, it's going to cut through the coating. It's going to cut through your paint. The good old off-roader pinstripes. Absolutely. Adds character. Yeah, I always love it and when people- And also devalues your vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> I always love it when people like live in a certain area and then they call it that. Like, oh, I call this the <laughs> Idaho pinstripes, right? Yeah. Oh, I call this the, yeah. you know, whatever, you know, the Joshua Tree pinstripes yeah. or whatever it is, you know, it's funny. But, um, but yeah, so the paint protection film is going to take that abuse. Um, of course, every surface has a limitation. If, if you're driving down the highway and a major rock hits your film, it's gonna go through it. But most of the rocks that you would encounter on the, on the highways are just going to bounce off the film. It may put a little bit of a mark in the film, but usually the film's soft enough, it kind of gives way. Mm -hmm. And it's if it damages enough and it doesn't go through the paint, you could just replace a quarter yes. panel or something rather than having to do the whole car. All exactly. Over. And what's nice is insurance companies now, I mean, I do recommend if you get these type of services, ceramic coating or PPF, let your insurance company know because it's not very expensive for them to add it to the policy. But these insurance companies now, they're used to paying out claims on the replacement of either of those mm. finishes. So what's nice about that is, is that if you do get certain, you know, someone tries to key your car or someone rubs up against it in the parking lot or whatever, things like that that occur, um, a lot of times an insurance claim is instead of having to pay for a repainted panel, they're now paying to re PPF. That's great. The, the, that panel and, yeah. and you have maintained your factory paint, yeah. which is really important for a lot of people. Oh, and what I love about it, some of it, Avery in particular is almost self-healing too, right? If you have a superficial scratch, put it in the sun, heat will actually kind yeah. of 
pop it back out. Yeah, so we installed S Tech here, um, and S Tech, yes, it has a, it actually has like a light ceramic coating top coat to it. Adding ceramic to it adds even more, um, but the but it has that self healing top coat. I will tell you, the self healing top coats on all the PPF finishes, they will diminish over time in its ability to heal faster than the film itself will diminish in in its protective abilities. It is a very thin you know, top coat, but yeah, it makes it so that yeah. if you make some mistakes in your washing process, the heat will, it'll help peel it back. So you Jeepers, you Bronco owners, you guys and gals who buy a brand new vehicle, highly recommend you either get a ceramic coat or if you have the budget to get the PPF and go for it, uh, two reasons. It's gonna protect it right away, right out of the factory if you coat it. We didn't for this one because we were getting ready for SEMA. It was going all over the place. You got new quarter panels and new Ram Air hood by advanced fiberglass. We just didn't have the time to do it right away. And now that we've used it a little bit, I feel like now is the time as the sweepstakes is ending to really paint correct it, get our ceramic coat on it, and then go for it. But from your perspective, you know, what is the best way to go for someone yeah, you know, what are the costs and yeah. the advantages and disadvantages of ceramic coat versus PPF? So the way I look at it, it's like this. So if you're not super concerned with that, you might, uh, like if you're a heavy, heavy off-roader and you don't really care that much that, you know, occasionally you might get some brush that does cut through the paint. What you're looking for is that the vehicle is easy to clean when you come back from your major off-roading trip, um, or you, um, you just want it to preserve the, the overall shine, that, that kind of standing back, that 10 foot, 20 foot value, we're like, God, my, my, as soon as I cleaned it, my vehicle still looks great. If you're kind of in that category, you're trying to keep the paint in healthy condition long-term, a ceramic coating is the best fit. The other way is if you're a light, if you look, a lot of overland type vehicles often don't see major overlanding, right? They're, they're kind of people just enjoy the stylist, you know. They the love them all though, they love it. Yes. And so if you're in that situation and you maybe do a little like light, like you might find some light roads to hit out, you know, in the country, a ceramic coating will also be great for that. If you are concerned, especially if you have a higher tier vehicle, a lot of times people will off-road with, they'll take a cheap vehicle and, and put all the money into the suspension, all that, obviously just run it. But if you've got a really expensive vehicle where the value is going to maintain, like I know do people have Raptors that are years old, they've gone off-roading and they still get what they put into it, right? Yeah. Those situations, having PPF makes the most sense to put that investment. Yeah. Um, there are different strategies. It is more expensive, like mostly what we do in our shop is all custom. Like we remove tons of panels. Um, we're tucking material in to make it look like we did, like you can't even tell yeah. that we put something there. Um, that costs a lot more. Mm -hmm. If you're going, so again, if it's more of a, a nice vehicle you're maintaining, it's worth the extra money. If you're gonna off-road a lot, maybe it makes sense to just, we can, rather than custom cut everything and tuck everything, we can pre-plot out some kits where it may not tuck quite as much. Yeah, you'll see some edges here and there, but- But you're gonna get it ripped up, exactly. rip it off anyway. Yeah. If you know you're going down a lot of trails and you're just gonna do that, it's actually smarter to do that. Not only financially, but also, it is easier to remove PPF from a panel that isn't tucked in, yeah. you know, when you, cause then you end up with, you know, when you remove it, sometimes you get some glue that's like kind of a pain in the butt to remove when you're replacing it. Whereas yeah. if we've taken it right to the edge of the panel and it's all just kit installed, you know, we don't have to take the doors apart cause it's cut around the door yeah. handle, stuff like that. It's a lot easier to replace it. Yeah. And you'll see some of the high end cars in the shop that have everything tucked in. You'll see on, um, maybe even around this shop, you have bumpers completely taken off. You want that look of like, oh wow, that what color paint is that? So it's a stock paint that just has a matte PPF on it that just makes it absolutely yeah. pop. So you guys do great work here. Now, what's the damage? How much can you <laughs> fork out? Need yeah, to fork out in order sure. to get it done. Well, the other thing, and I'm glad you mentioned matte PPF because one of the things I was going to say is, for off-roading vehicles especially, um, matte PPF will hide more damage visually than a gloss and it looks really cool. It's actually easier to clean by the way. And it just, it seems to handle the just cars that live or trucks that live hundred percent, 24 seven outside. You're going to see the weathering happen faster on a PPF glossy finish than on a matte finish. Mm. So that's something to kind of consider as well. Plus it gives it a fun, you know, kind of rugged look. Yeah. Um, so ceramic coating, let's first just talk brand new car, ceramic coating versus PPF. I'm gonna speak a little bit in some generalities, 
But typically a ceramic coating job, you know, uh, at, at a shop like ours is gonna be in the, you know, 1500 on the very low end for like a, a quick prep. If you're like, hey, I just, I just really want the coating. Quick yeah. polishing prep, it's not a lot, you know, like light paint correction work. You know, 1500, two grand is kind of typical, but you can get up into the three grand, four grand kind of range when you have more paint correction as needed or if you're getting into yeah. the higher tier coatings. And it all comes down to labor, right? I mean, the amount of time that you spend really making sure every single layer is dialed, that it's clean, that it looks like it's coming from the factory, it takes time. Uh, if you've ever detailed your car and really gotten into it, you know how long that takes, you know how sore your forearms and shoulders are gonna be at the end of it. And then from there, it's just all comes down to time and labor. 100%, and the other thing is, is what most people don't realize when they're shopping around to get a ceramic coating, the most expensive part of getting a ceramic coating is the polishing. Mm -hmm. The, I think what separates shops like ours and the high-end shops is our understanding of how to wield that machine. Yeah. How, you know, how to know, look at a car and just know, okay, I'm gonna need this pad and this polish and this machine, and I need to make sure on this particular paint, I gotta keep the paint cool, so I gotta run my machine at a slower speed versus a faster speed. That, that experience, that knowing of how to handle these cars mm -hmm. is what separates shops. When you see these, like, honestly, there are shops that would charge $600 to ceramic coat this. It's because they don't understand that poly, they don't, they just, it's just like, it's just a mechanism. They do enough work to just get the coating on, Yeah. you know? Um, and so that, that is a huge, huge, huge differentiation that most people don't understand is how important the polishing is. Now, that being said, with the condition, and we'll go through some of the condition on this so we can have some clear expectations between you and me on what our approach is gonna be on this car, but also just in general, how you guys should be thinking about your own vehicles is if it's already really well swirled up and you're gonna continue to take it off-roading, paint correction, when we're machine polishing, if this is your clear coat, we're taking clear coat down. We're going below that the damage that, that exists. If there's wash damage, swirls, that's damage, right? So we're, we're actually leveling the paint. Well, if you just, go for broke and do a full out $4,000 paint correction and ceramic coating on this vehicle in its current state, you go off-roading it, wash off all the mud, put new swirl marks in, because the coating is scratch resistant, not scratch proof. Yep. And on black, you're gonna see it. Yeah. If you were to coat half of it, you would see, oh wow, it's actually scratching way less than the paint, but it's still gonna get scratched. So if we've gone to town thinning out your paint, and then we have to do that again and again. You're, it's not the right decision. It's yeah. better to back off and make it look stunning from right here. You walk around and go, wow, this looks, this yeah. looks beautiful, you know? And so PPF, like a general range. So we're talking for a professional shop like yours to do minor paint correction and then a ceramic coat, somewhere from $2,000 to $4,000, $4,000 being more showroom ready. Yes. That thing is dialed, looks like it just came from the factory. Yeah. But PPF, Beyond obviously, Beyond the factory, <laughs> yeah. better than new. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if you are doing PPF, the amount of labor coming from taking everything off, like what are we looking at there? Yeah, so I'll kind of give a little bit of a range, matte PPF versus gloss, uh, tucking materials in versus not. So you're looking to start around $6,000 for a full you know, vehicle wrap mm. where we're not getting into as much tucking and things like that. Um, when we're doing matte PPF, we want to tuck more, especially if yeah. it's a dark vehicle, because the problem is, is that you do see like on black. Once you see starch, little shiny edges Absolutely. on the side. Yeah. Now, if someone really said, listen, I do want the matte conversion, but I am going to go and off-road the, you know, the heck out of this car. I need to keep the cost down. We would be willing to make some concessions for that. Um, but cars that are more show cars, they like to go to car meets and stuff. We'll draw the line and say, no, like we're, we don't want to represent our work that way. Yeah. You know, and it's just not going to look right. Yeah. But so if it's a functional thing, fine. Yeah. You know, so, but when you start getting into the, again, the higher tier, you're looking more in the eight, $8,500 range on, on this kind of vehicle. I mean, PPF can range like, you know, we've done cars where we're at, you know, 12,000, $15,000 because of the complexity. Sometimes we yeah. get these crazy wide body, you know, exotic cars in that just, they just are extremely complex. Everything has to be completely custom. They just take time. And there is a, in, within this industry, the higher 
skilled the shops are too. They're, you know, of course, like the more complex things they're going to bill they're out paying internally. their labor more. That's yeah. just how it goes. And the, especially a shop like your guys is when you're paying for that experience to yes. get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, we don't have uh, low paid guys here. You yeah. know? We have very skilled uh, people that are really passionate about what yeah. they do. They're the, you know, my crew here are the type, they treat it like it's their own business. Yeah. You know, they really are like, if there's something they're not happy with, they'll catch it before we catch it and say, Hey, I want to redo this panel. Cause some, you know, maybe a piece of debris that got caught that they didn't see till it dried out or whatever things, you know, we, we tend to go beyond what the average shop will yeah. do to make sure it's, it's absolutely. Really nice, you know? So I bet most of you watching right now, unless you're like a total gearhead, probably don't even know what the heck we're talking about. We've been geeking about this for a while, but now I guarantee you every single black car you look at, you'll start pointing out the swirl marks and everything. I can't stop looking at them when I see a car on the street. So let's go into this guy. Let's talk about yeah. Apollo here, our 2021 Badlands. Someone is going to win this car. We're giving it away. March 31st is the last day to enter, but you could see the quarter panels here are brand new from advanced fiberglass, Ram Air hood. We rushed this to get it done for SEMA and it needs a little TLC. After we off-road it and take it out, we're wiping it down constantly, a lot of dirt, a lot of dust. We don't really off-road our vehicles hard and we're not taking through brush or going like deep into the sticks because realistically it's not gonna be our car in the end. But there is just from general washing it and we've been so careful, there's already some swirls on here. The look on your face when you saw it first. <laughs> I see like, things that I don't even see, but like, let's what are we trying to do before the weekend? <laughs> I know. So what are we, what are we looking at here? What are we working with? All right. So, you know, first thing I want to even just show you before we do any kind of work to it, you know, we can see that even through the dust, um, you can see there's quite a bit of swirl marks through here. So what we like to do when we're working on cars is we utilize led lighting here. So, you know, this lighting in here is nice to kind of make the car present well and looks looks pretty but all these lights in the shop they're circular mm. they show damage really well so it helps nice. us be more efficient in our polishing but when we were talking about really the refined polishing then we always keep these on our polishing belts um, these scan grip lights they give us a directional you know light so that you can actually see so what's going on with the and it's a little bit easier to see even on your phone so zoom in there you could see those little swirlies you got a little bit of dust on there that's just yeah. having a black car it is what it is yeah. Uh, and we washed this thing yesterday, so you could see that. So now we'll put a little bit of the, uh, what do you got here? So this is wash mist. This is our waterless wash. This is how we clean every car that comes into our shop. Um, obviously, if you had gone out mudding with this vehicle, that would be a limitation. We don't have drains and things like that here because the city won't permit it. Yeah. So, um, and I've been dealing with that with California since, you know, since 2010, when I moved back here and started detailing again here. Um, so obviously a mudded out vehicle, it's better to use a Go crush washer yeah. and, you know, yeah. so, um, there's definitely limitations to every aspect of all this stuff. Right. Yeah. But in the, in the situation that this vehicle, you know, the condition it's in, this is perfect. So all we're going to do is just spray a fine mist and just very gently uh, this, these towels are really, really soft and very absorbent. So it's going to pick up that dirt and I'll just spray a little bit more. So are you guys reusing towels and washing them or do you yes. use it? So what we do though, is we, so you can see how quickly that just so wiped pretty. out. Um, and there's actually, so in order to make this lubricating enough to not scratch, because it's actually safer than, than water and soap methods to yeah. clean this way. If you're doing it right with the right towel, the right, the right mixture and the right uh, technique. But the lubricants that are in here technically are a sealant. Mm. They're just not engineered to bond and stick. Yeah. So what people will say is like, even if they've never detailed their car with any, put any protection after washing it and then it rains, they're like, wow, my car is like beating water because it is going to last for a little bit. So, yeah. you know, I've actually have some detailers that buy this from us that their entry level, they'll call it a wash wax Yeah. because it kind of lasts as long as the battle wax. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so now you can see, so we've cleaned that dust off so we can really see the paint. And what I want to kind of point out here is that without, without that led light, it looks pretty good. I don't know, Wes, <laughs> I don't see anything. It looks, <laughs> that looks perfect right uh -huh. there. Absol absolutely stunning. Don't shine the light on it. Um, <laughs> what I, what I want to point out like up here shh, 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 <laughs> is how kind of gray it looks. Yeah. You know, so, you know, the, the, the um, abrasion that's gone over the surface has doled out the clear coat to where yeah. it doesn't have that luster. So what's important about that is, is that let's say 
Like I've worked with people where even in the condition this is they're like, listen, I don't care that it has swirl marks. I just don't like that it's not black. Yeah. That it's not rich and vibrant. So even like a light paint corrective polishing will round off the, the damage to and bring clarity to that clear coat. So at least it's really black and super lustrous. Nice. Under directional light, like a, you know, an LED light like that, you'll still see those swirl marks, but they won't look so like right now these swirl marks like look white or rainbowy because the light is reflecting off of that sharp scratch. Yeah. When you round that off, you don't you don't get that that you just see the black with some some marks in it. Nice. Um, I personally think the the approach with this vehicle, um, you know, would be to do kind of a, a moderate paint correction, um, being that more than likely whoever is going to get this vehicle is going to go and enjoy it for how it is. So I would say I hope so. Let's not do a four. And if they don't. You don't deserve it. <laughs> right. But you can sell it if you want. Change lives. Change lives over here. All right. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I don't think a, a $4,000 detail makes sense for this. I think probably, I would say in this condition, because it's not brand new, we have a lot, you know, I think like 2,500 bucks is about the right level of service uh, for. What and it makes doing. sense. Let's make this thing shine in its glory of a Greek God that it is. Absolutely. All right. Let's see the damage here when we uh, take off all the dust on the swirl marks, I'm nervous. So when you see right here, those little swirlies, that gray that Wes was talking about, that's just something that happens over time with cars if they, you aren't, you know, if you're actually using them and washing them. So let's, let's get rid of that. Yeah. It's disgusting. Let's knock it out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, how long does it typically take? And what is the expectations when you, a customer, customer comes in for a ceramic coat paint correction like that? So let's say it's brand new. Um, typically we can turn that around from, from drop off to pick up for a ceramic coating in a couple of days. Uh, sometimes we might ask for two days, two nights. So the coating, you know, like let's say we got it coated at, at more towards the end of the day, then we're gonna want it to have some, a few hours of curing time before it goes out on the road. Uh, for paint protection film, full wrap, again, if we're disassembling and tucking versus just putting yeah. material on, you know, usually with those bigger projects, especially just as busy as the shop is. Mm -hmm. And we have to get, like if someone comes in for a full front and ceramic coating, I have to, I, I can't only do my full wraps and let those sit. I gotta get the front end yeah. done so my detailers can work. So we usually ask for these cars to be here about two to three weeks. Uh, real, realistically, it's about a week's worth of work. So if you're, if you're not in San Diego and you're you know, working with a shop where it's like a one, you know, like kind of a, a one person crew or two person crew or something, usually they can do a full wrap in about a week. Sometimes people are efficient. I know a, a guy in Georgia does it in a day. That's pretty fast, uh, but he's got a big crew, you know? Yeah. Um, but so it's typically a few days like that. Um, in this instance, I think basically, um, I want to say we're Wednesday, right? Yeah. So, well, we should be finishing this car up uh, probably by the end of the day, Friday, uh, getting ready for our event you know, Sweet. on Saturday. So two and, a half, right. two and a half days of uh, hammering down. <laughs> well, I will say based on how busy the shop is, it's, you know, a month scheduling out at least. That is a textbook example of someone who has really good return business, does a really good job. I've been so impressed coming and working with you and talking with you, Wes. Uh, this is going to be cool. I'm glad that our vehicle is in your hands. So Wes, thank you so much for taking Apollo in your hands. We're excited to see the final outcome. We'll get some before pictures here, get some pictures and video of the work. And then if you want to learn more about Elite Finish and you're in Southern California or Nevada, you should not go anywhere else besides Elite Finish. Go to elite-finish.com to check it out. We'll leave a link in the description below and uh, wait till you see the after. I'm excited. Should be red. There we go. Oh, this kind looks insane. Rig. Yeah. This looks brand new. Yeah, so we got, it's like an 85% pressure. There's like so much more gloss in this whole car. Yeah. It's, it looks it, black. Yeah. Like that it's is. what this thing deserves. It's, it's such a well-built yeah. rig and it's, it's nice to make it shine up. I know we're going to go off road and have yeah. some fun with it, but now it's got some protection on it and it looks. Good. I don't even want, I don't whoever, want to touch Whoever takes this thing home is gonna be really stoked because it's uh, gonna look super fresh. All right, I'm with Kevin, general manager of Elite Finish. 
uh, this thing looks nuts. Uh, yeah. How much time and effort went into it, you think? It was a couple, I mean, it was, it was a couple days of just polishing and correction. Um, you know, fiber, fiberglass panels can be a little fussy to correct because they heat up differently than metal panels. So, yeah. Um, spending some more time in those extra areas because I know you guys went all out on this body kit to really show off like the clearance you can have with 37s and, and you know, having this hood is actually really cool. I can't, yeah. believe, I can't believe more people don't have this hood. It's so cool. Um, so working on those panels just to make sure everything's fresh. We also went through and cleaned up the suspension. We left the tires dirty to show that it's it has been used. It's not a mall crawler. It goes yeah. out. It goes off road. So. No need to polish in between the treads. That's going to get <laughs> dusted yeah. up real quick. Yeah. But so it's yeah, quite a bit of work went into it. It's got two layers of coating on it. It's got a good amount of protection throughout. Should be a breeze to clean. Nice. It's got all the sun protection, hydrophobic stain resistance. It'll be awesome for whoever picks it up. I, I'm amazed. Like. You don't really notice. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's one of those like things. Kind of, yeah. yeah, but the second that you polish it and get it going yeah, and that so. ceramic coat is just gonna protect it, I'm stoked. So yeah, we brought it back to life, brought it back to new, and then now you guys know the drill. Uh, get entered to win this Bronco at Forge4x4.com. It comes with $20,000 in the glove box. You can get entered to win by going to Forge4x4.com, become a member for $12.95. You'll get 15 entries when you sign up and 15 entries every single month, or Make a one-time purchase on our shop. Every one time, one dollar you spend equals one entry to win. That's I've got something. a hat on the way. I've got a camo six-panel hat on the way. So. There you go. Sweet. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, but you actually can't win now that we've I worked know. with you. But <laughs> but hey, I got a hat to show for it. And then you know, I can't believe like you get an entry for every dollar you spend, right? And yeah. Even some some more. If there's stuff for like fifty cents, I saw those more than one token. So. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Get her to win at 4x4.com.